Hello and welcome commanders. Today I'm going to be talking a little about the trade tab in EVA. It's the Elite Dangerous Virtual Assistant. If you've not come across this before, then do go have a look. It's intended to be a kneeboard, just like real world pilots use, but for Elite Dangerous. Now, as I say today, I'm just going to be talking about the trade tab because it's very flexible, it's very powerful, which means it can be quite difficult sometimes to get the results that you're looking for. So I just wanted to take a quick tour of what it's able to do. So I'm running this on an Android emulator in a tablet format. It does work on phones and it works on Apple devices as well. Just go visit the relevant app store. Now, EVA works best if it's linked up to a desktop program called EdProxy. This sends a lot of information across in real time from the game. Unfortunately, that doesn't work properly with console versions of the game, but you can, even on a console version, still use the Trade tab. The only thing you lose on the Trade tab is the ability to know exactly where you are. That's annoying, but it's not a major deal because all you have to do is type in part of the system name. So, this has been connected with a PC version of the game, so it does know where I am. And I can show that by simply coming in here and clicking the pin marker, which immediately fills in the fact that I'm in Maya. If I fill in the pin marker on the station line, then it fills in that I'm at Obsidian Orbital. Now, quick overview of the things in here. The star is a star system. The planet is the planet or the station that you're at. These ones are distances. I will cover all of these in a lot more detail. Over here we have a list of commodities. And we have some other options down here. Finally, the little button at the top there swaps the two sides over. So if you want to swap the source and the target systems over, you don't have to retype anything. So, what can this do? Well, quite a lot. First thing, very simple thing to do. I'll put that back to any station and it's on list mode. And I'm just going to do a quick search there. And it comes up with commodities in Maya. So that's simply because I haven't given it anything better to search on. We have any commodity here and we have any station here. Now if I want to find out what's in a specific place, I could say let's see what's on at Moni's Hub. Do another search and we have all of the commodities there. Supply, demand and the buying and selling prices. So great, that's a list of all of the stuff in a station or a system. That's not a brilliant function for a trade computer unless you just want to have a quick browse. So what's the next level up? Well, let's clear the station. And we do another search, and it's listed aluminium in Maya. So that's a bit more useful. It shows me where it is. It shows me whether it's a station or not. And it's showing the distance in light seconds from the jump point. So, you know, if you're flying into somewhere where the station is hundreds of thousands of light seconds away, you might want to give it a miss because that can take quite a long time in real time to get to. Supply, demand and the prices. But let's say that's not good enough or I want a bit more choice. Well we can come to the light years box, this one here, and we can say let's say 30 and search again. And now we have aluminium to sell within 30 light years of Maya. And there's a bit more choice here. We have the system, station, and again, distance in light seconds, distance in light years, supply, demand, and the prices. Let's say I want to buy it instead of sell it. We just change that. Do another search, aluminium to buy. So it's a bit rarer nearby. But these would tell me where, as far as EVA is aware, these things exist. Now, as you know, the trade system in Elite Dangerous is constantly changing and it's possible that by the time you get there it may not be available anymore so in that case you would have a look at the supply these ones highly unlikely to run out so what else can we do 
let's say we only want to look at ones which aren't a complete pain to get to. So let's say anything under 10,000 light seconds away from the center. Well, we can go to the light seconds box here, which is basically distance to the station. And let's put in 5,000. Less typing. OK. And search. And you can see those results are gone now. So you can really limit things or widen it up. You just click these ones again to clear them. And we're back to aluminium in Maya because that's now any station and it doesn't have a range. So that's the simple listing feature. What's more useful is the trade feature. So what we're going to do now is where over here we have the base system, that's where you are, we're going to put in a target system and I'm going to just set that to obsidian orbital first. So target system, again you can use this to say where you are but there's no point in trying to do a trade really between the system that you're in. I mean you can do between stations but just for the sake of argument let's choose Sol. And we do a search there and we still have aluminium set so trades for aluminium from obsidian orbital to Sol. We can get more specific and limit it to a particular station as well, but since there are no trades there, probably because there's no aluminium in obsidian orbital, it's not showing any. Let's widen that out. Right, so from system to system, we do have trades. From station to station, it gives you the distances from the jump point again, buying and selling prices and the profit, how much you would get assuming these prices remain the same by the time you get there. That's per unit, but you can go into the settings and tell it to show you the profit per journey. Uh, you just need to tell it what your cargo capacity is. And over the right here, it gives you profit per light year, so that one's not particularly profitable. What else can we do in here? We can add a specific station, so if you have a mission to go to a particular station and you don't want to waste time, you can just find the best trade between precisely where you are and precisely that station. So let's have a look at where are we going to, Columbus, just one that we know is going to show up in the results. Columbus, search, and trades for aluminium from Maya to Columbus in the Sol system, and we have these two possibilities. As before, you can add in the maximum distance in light seconds. So if we've got 635 and 636, they must be really close. Let's filter on 635 just to show that it works. And filter, and we only get the one at 635. So you can be very, very specific in what you're trying to find. You can be more general. Let's clear that out and search for any commodity. Search, trades from Maya, any station, no distance filters, to Columbus, in Seoul. And it's organised by profit. Any of these headings, you can tap on and it'll sort. And it'll sort the other way, just tap on it again. Once again to reverse it. So that's the most profitable trade that we have. But that's only one credit per light year, per unit. So if you've got a reasonably sized chip, then you'd get something out of it. But still, that's pretty poor. You probably wouldn't want to go for that as a trade. What else can we do? You can limit it for specific commodities, if that's what you wanted to do. And we're back there. Now this is still in list mode. The next interesting one is root mode. And this is really where the power of the trade system comes in. To enable root mode, we need to add in a range. So I'm going to add in 40 light years, which is currently the maximum that this will deal with. It takes quite a lot of processing power and we are talking about phones here, so that is limited somewhat. And you'll see we now have the option to go for root. Root completely changes it. This option up here is the number of hops you want in your trade route. And we have options for maximum jump distance and the minimum profit 
as well as certain other characteristics here. But let's just do a quick search there. So we have two set up there and the results we're getting are the best two hop trades within 40 light years of Maya. So what this is saying is if we start in HIP 17694 at Hudson Observatory, which is reasonably close to the star and we buy titanium, we can then fly to Maya at Maya point and sell that titanium. At Maya point we buy palladium and we fly back to there. And if we keep doing that just in a circle over and over again, then we get quite a lot of profit on there. Now the catch on this one is that Maya only has one unit of palladium available, so that's probably not that useful. So what else have we got? That one's a bit more useful. Now although this is listed with Maya as the base system, this is just any system within 40 light years of Maya. It doesn't necessarily have to be where you are. So that's 1,521 per cargo hold unit profit following this route. And go there, buy these, go there, sell them, buy these, go back there, and you'll make that much for every slot in your cargo hold for each run. If you are able to land on the surface, then you can flip that switch there and search again. And are there any showing up on here on the surface? No, rather annoyingly there aren't, but you can tell it to include or exclude surface pads. You can tell it to include or exclude large pads. So if you're flying a ship that needs a large pad, then you switch that on and you'll get correspondingly fewer results. So I'm going to switch that off. Now I'm going to turn that up to four and you can see now we're getting up to four. It's not necessarily four hops per route because this route here is just as profitable in two hops as this one is in four. The catch there as before is that palladium is only in stock to one unit in Maya. However, let's switch on in system transit. Now what this means is that when you fly into a system, but sell your previous cargo, buy a new cargo, it looks around for other potential trades within that same system. So if you can make money from flying into point A, selling whatever you're carrying, buying something and then flying to point B within the same system, buying something there and then leaving the system, then it will include those because they tend to be quite quick and they're actually quite fun flying around in system. So let's do that. And we can see now the trade routes get rather longer. And we have one here where it's saying after we've flown into HIP 17692 and we've sold our Galite, we buy Palladium at Black Mount Orbital. We then fly to Black Mount Habitation, sell the Palladium, buy pesticides, and then fly out to HR 1185 and sell the pesticides at the Indra. So you can see there's some quite complex routes being thrown up here. You can also add your light system limit. So let's add on a thousand. That's light second, obviously, not light system. Requery. And the options are slightly lower because one of those was above 1000. But let's clear that back out. Okay, and requery. Yeah, so we're back up to having the options there that are above a thousand light seconds from the jump point. Now, final two options on here are the maximum jump and the minimum profit. So even knows how far away these systems are from each other you can say the jump range of my ship fully laden is whatever it turns out to be. Let's just say 20 light years. Requery. And it's limiting these trades now. I'm not sure whether we can actually see any on there, but it's limiting the trades now to that range between subsequent star systems. 
there's no point in trying to come up with a trade route where you need to stop somewhere halfway to refuel. Okay, so what else can we do on here? The one final thing we need to have a look at are these little arrows here. Anywhere you see that on a listing, it means that you can hold your finger on there and we get an option up. So we can just copy that as text or you can set it as a filter. So if I do that, doesn't actually do much here, but if we come back to the list option, then we can see that that's been set there. These are actually ignored for, uh, oh, that's faster on an actual device. These are actually ignored in root option anyway. Other options on there, create a bookmark, add to bookmark. Now, bookmarks, not really part of the trade system as such, but it's worth mentioning them. The bookmarks in EVA existed sometime before what was called bookmarks in Elite Dangerous itself. Bit unfortunate. And they are entirely different things. There's no connection between the two because Frontier don't allow external apps like this to read your bookmarks. So how do bookmarks work? Well, let's say I want to fly this trade route. Any of these lines on here, I can say bookmark route and new bookmark created. Now, if I come into the nav and then across to the bookmarks sub tab, we can see I have a bookmark there. And I can double tap on that and it shows me not a bookmark for a single place, but a bookmark for the entire trade route. And if you were to now fly this trade route with EdProxy enabled, that's the tool that sits on your desktop and feeds information in real time, then you would get speech instructions when you fly the trade route. So when you fly into Pleiades PDS B40 carrying scrap, Eva would tell you, now go to Iasu dock and sell your scrap and buy Galite. Same with the in-house, uh, the in-system trades. So these aren't a way of marking a single place to go and visit. It's a way of marking an entire trade route for later use. Of course, that trade route may not be much use later on because the prices and the availability constantly change. But it's useful as a reminder. And you can bookmark individual systems as well. You can build routes up yourself by coming into here and saying add to bookmark so you can bookmark a single item in a single location. The point is that these are not elite dangerous bookmarks, they're EVA bookmarks and they are rather more flexible. Unfortunately there's no way of bringing your elite dangerous bookmarks into EVA. So hopefully this has shown you something of what the trade tab can do. It is complicated, I know it's complicated, but it's also very, very flexible. And if you just give it the right information, it will do its best to fill in the gaps and give you trade routes, lists, best places to buy, best places to sell. All of that is quite useful and having it on a kneeboard outside of your PC is actually really, really useful. It means you're not constantly flicking out to go to a browser to go and do this kind of lookup. Everyone's got a phone or a tablet. You might as well use it while you're flying. That's what real pilots do with a kneeboard. That's what I do. So, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's been useful. If you have any other trade searches that you can think of, then let me know. Other than that, enjoy Eva. Thanks for watching.